All right, so we're going to look at an angular momentum example. And what we're going to have here is a dumbbell with uh, mass M on each end, and we're going to talk about the rod as if it was a negligible mass. So the rod has negligible mass, and it has length L. And then what we're going to do, hope I spelled negligible right, is we're going to have a clay ball with mass M, and we're going to send it right at the center of mass to where it is going to hit at L over 2 away. And there are two ways we need to think about this. We need to think about this in terms of linear momentum and in terms of angular momentum. So linear momentum P and angular momentum L. Now when this object hits the center of our dumbbell, it's hitting right at the center of mass and it's going to cause the object to travel uh, in a straight line and the object should not rotate. So we're going to go ahead and start and we're going to treat this as if it was a linear object. We would have mass <clears throat> traveling with velocity v hitting something that is 2m. And what would happen then is they would combine afterwards. So they would compl uh, collide completely inelastic. So before we have m times v and then 2m times 0 and then afterwards we have 3m traveling with some velocity we'll call v. So we have m1 v1 plus 2m v2 is going to equal 3m v prime where the m's will cancel on both sides and we're left with 2v equals v prime and then at that point we're able to divide uh, by 3 and we will equal v we end up with v3 v over 3 equals v prime now the key to this is the reason we end up with v over 3 equals v prime is that 2m times v2 uh, well v2 is 0 so with v2 being 0 that whole term cancels so we really end up with m1 v1 equals 3m v prime and we cancel the m's and then divide by 3 and we get the velocity after would equal uh, one third of the velocity initial. All right, now let's take a look at our angular momentum where we have the initial angular momentum equals the final angular momentum. Uh, and looking at the initial angular momentum, we will start with the clay ball where the clay ball is m times v, the velocity it's traveling, times a, where a is the distance it is away from the pivot. Well, A equals zero because it hits dead on the pivot. So that is zero. And so if that is zero, we have no angular momentum. It doesn't hit any point away from the center and therefore causes no rotation. So really, so really all that happens with this example is that the mass or the clay ball hits the dumbbell and the dumbbell all travels away uh, once they stick together, the clay ball and the dumbbell travel at a velocity of v over 3 as it travels away. Uh, but now let's look at it as if the clay ball is going to travel toward one end of the dumbbell. Uh, still traveling with a velocity v, the dumbbell still a length of l. And when, at, when it collides and has a collision, we're going to end up with 2m on one side and mass m on the other and the center of mass is going to be a little off center but that's our pivot point we're going to rotate about that pivot point and it's like I said it's real easy to locate um, visually but now we have to calculate it <clears throat> by finding the position of center of mass so the position of center of mass is 2m times 0 And really while the uh, 2m is at position 0, a lot of you are sitting here going, well, it's got a distance from the center of mass that we need to calculate. Well, if we just change our frame of reference where the top is 0, well, the other end will be L away. So now we have 2m with 0, and we've changed that frame of reference for where the mass is going to be hit to be 0. 
and then we have the other mass, a length of L away, all over the total effective mass of 3m. And so that cancels, so we, uh, that term cancels because 2m times 0 is 0, and then we can cancel out the m's, because we're left with ml over 3m, m's cancel, and so the position of center of mass is L over 3, which taking a look at it, the center of mass seems to be one-third uh, of the distance from one end. So when doing the position of center of mass, it's easier to just to pick one location where it makes the calculation easy because you'll, you'll be able to make sure it's right or, or visually check and see if it makes sense after you're done kind of knowing where the center of mass should be based on how the object is going to hit each other. So when we look at the initial part of the system, and then before the collision, uh, it is still L over 3 there as well. So now we need to calculate the initial angular momentum of the system before. And it's going to be m times the velocity of the mass uh, initially, so mv initial. And then we have to do what we did before previously where we have that angle theta and we have to find that velocity perpendicular and recognize that it is going to have a distance that's going to be L over 3 away. So M V naught times L over 3 plus 0 because the barbell itself didn't have any angular momentum. So the bar is not moving. And that is going to equal I omega which is angular momentum final. And I is going to be 2m times L over 3 squared plus ml, I'm sorry, m 2 thirds L squared because the other mass is 2 thirds away from, 2, two thirds L away from the center of mass. Uh, combining like terms, we're going to get 6ml squared over 9, which is going to come out to uh, 2 thirds ml squared. So initially we have m v naught l over 3, which is going to equal 2 thirds ml squared times omega. Our masses are going to cancel. Our l's are going to cancel, so we're left with 1 on the after side. Our 3's are going to cancel. And so we have V naught equals 2L omega. And since we're looking for the speed of the object afterwards, and it's rotating, uh, divide by 2L on both sides, and the angular velocity is going to equal V naught over 2L. So then we have to look at it in its linear momentum. So we're going to start with a mass of m traveling with a velocity of v naught, and it's going to hit a object that is 2m that is sitting stationary with velocity of 0. And they're going to combine or stick together, so com completely inelastic collision. And they're going to travel away with a velocity of v naught over 3. Uh, you can refer to the previous slide on how we got that. And so what we're going to have is we're going to have a barbell that is going to be traveling in that direction with the clay ball attached to it, making the mass on one end bigger, traveling in a linear direction with v naught over 3. And then it's also going to be rotating about a center of mass at an angular velocity of v naught over 2 L. So we have two things occurring here. It's got velocity in both directions. Um, it's rotating about itself, about the center of mass, that is one-third from, one, from the end of the rod or two-thirds from the other end of the rod, and then it's traveling with a velocity of v naught over 3 in the other direction. So uh, this is one of the more complicated examples you will see. And we'll do a few examples of this in class, but this is just a, few, or this is just a way of seeing what we can and probably will see, uh, can do and what we'll probably see 
on the exam or on your test or things of that nature. And it's really important to pay attention to uh, a single mass traveling about a point and how we got its angular uh, momentum. And uh, we'll, we'll just make sure we get a lot of practice on this.